sounds like I was being a jackass. <laughs> oh, how did you go? Did you win? Did you? No, you were second out. A lot of people were like questioning aspects of Endigo's character and like being very vocal about it. You're so cool. We really want to work with you. Really hard to do that when you were in Tokyo. I got really depressed after the show. Depressed? Uh, yeah. Hey, podcast students, it's Kappa Kata. Oh, Lady Big coming at you with another Matrix exiting and storming off. Cat with Bits! Specialist guests ever in the studio today. Yes, I'm seeing double. Oh, so much cute. Oh, oh wow. Well, oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right. Hi there. Wow. <laughs> Explain yourself. Explain uh, yourself. A familiar face? Not yet familiar face. Mm -hmm. So let's start first. Double trouble. We had you on the show before. Indigo! Oh, no. oh, it's such a pleasure to be back here. In this uh, in this new studio, yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. thanks for having me back on. It's been about a year since last time. Remember, a lot it's, of I things have happened. Longer than that, it's only been a year. So no, because last long. time I couldn't tell you about Drag Race. Exactly. Ah, so, but this happened. year you're gonna tell us all about all it, about, about Drag, Drag Race. Race, music producing in Japan. And while you're leaving Japan, mm. so there's a bit of tea to spill mm. as well. Old but, exit strategy. But we also in the room have your twin. Huh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ali Quiconic Ali. Hello. Yay. Hello, Ali. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Ali. Why do you look like me? I don't know. Why do you look like me? I don't know. <laughs> it's not too I, I started. Oh my god, I'm away. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Holy moly! Yes. <laughs> Lots of stuff. So first of all, Ali, feel free to introduce yourself just a little bit more. Yeah, and no, you are actually in the studio looking yeah. alike. Yeah, no, so hi, my name is Ali. Uh, I am a uh, stylist for Indigo. That's my main primary job. I'm also Indigo's girlfriend. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. oh. Yes. Anyway, oh. Uh -huh. But uh, I do voice acting and video game uh, esports commentary here in Japan as well. So uh, kind yeah. of just like a game dude. I do kind of everything. I'm pink mm. too. Mainly known on pink too. Being pink. So um, I feel like yeah. the pink part really is quite the branding. That's yeah. really come like, at the start of the sentence. That's with meat and potatoes. <laughs> Listen, I, my head is all over the place. I'm just excited to be in the presence of these legends. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, but uh, yeah, so I've just been doing pink for seven years. That was my main uh, intro to Ali 101. And uh, I've been doing that for seven years now. Mm -hmm. Just straight, okay. all pink. Not today so much, but... What are you talking about tonight? Not pink at all, yeah. Very really yeah, glad. Yeah, I guess that's boring. Sorry. My standards are quite high. So for, for our listeners, uh, Ali always has pink hair. She's got yeah. pink hair normally today. Yeah. Just for the occasion, she's wearing a blonde wig to match oh, my sweet. natural blonde hair. Yes. Which is not dyed at all, I promise. Yes. Um, <laughs> Twin duo. Hero. Twin duo. Twin duo. <laughs> there is a whole lot of story how Ali came to be in Japan, mm -hmm. which I was... There for I was yes. watching as I was emotionally very involved in it. You guys are mates, eh? With Pop yeah, yeah. With so, best friends. We're all mates, but you guys were mates at yeah. this time. Like even before exactly. you came exactly. to exactly. Yep. One hundred percent. We would love to hear that story because yeah. that was quite a battle. There's mm -hmm. going to be an entire episode about Ali's story as well on the next one. So be sure to stay tuned for that one as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Yes. Cheers. Good night. Ah, oh, that was my whole episode. Don't close episode. the podcast up now. We're not ready to close up. No, no. Too short. Too short. Too so, short. So the past year, you've been busy, my friend. Tell us what's been happening. Yes. Uh. Well. Wow. What has not been happening? So, um, I don't know. Where do we start? Where do you want to start? Well, last time, about... you had a very important uh, uh, arrangement happening in the nation of Sweden, which you weren't allowed to mention at the time. Yes. But now you can mention it. So if you, yeah, so if you, if anybody watching this, if you watched the previous episode I was on last year, uh, yeah, I was already cast on Drag Race Sweden at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, episode 23 and 24. In case. Episode 23, 23 yes. and 24. We have two full juicy episodes. Of I was equally casted on both, um, I think, more or less. Um, <laughs> Just time you have to share, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. No, so I was on um, Drag Race Sweden season one that aired earlier this year. Um, and uh, what else? I've made a bunch of music. I made some music for uh, Baby mm -hmm. Beard. Thank you very much. That you guys have been very lovely. active playing. Yep, yep. Every time I see your live clips from like Argentina or wherever you play, mm. and I'm just, oh, that's my song. And I hear my guitar solo. I'm like, oh, it's it's awesome. almost like I'm there. It's, Good. It's, that it's makes great. you feel happy. Yeah. Excellent. Me too. I'm like, oh. It's like proud. having you there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
yeah. So, Songs and Drag Race Sweden. How did that happen? Like, how do you become part of one yeah. of the most exciting reality TV it's shows? Every drag queen's dream. Um, yeah. l- well, listen, I'm not the conventionalist drag queen in the world. I don't do splits and dances and the whole ratatata thing. I can't do that. More power to you if you do that, but I just can't move my body that way. Um, I've always been a musician, first and foremost, uh, performer, live performer, metal performer, first and foremost, before I did any sort of drag race related stuff. Um, I don't know, I, I just sent in an application and I think I was kooky enough and I played a guitar solo on my audition tape mm. and I was very chaotic and I, I suppose I just offered something maybe um, a lot of the other quite talented queens in Sweden maybe it didn't. So that's how I got on, I guess. And uh, you know, the show aired. Um, there was a talent show episode in which I played a guitar solo um, on the show. And that, too, has given me a lot of like, oh, my God, look at this drag queen who can play guitar. Wow. So, you know, a lot of cool PR through that. So it's been, it's been a ride and still is. I would imagine if I were casting a show like Drag Race, yeah. after you got through so many seasons, you would think that you had seen kind of the gamma of drag. Right. So finding someone who's Swedish but lives in Japan and uh, speaks fluent Japanese and plays guitar and does heavy metal and so forth. Sure. Would definitely add a lot of spice to the usual formula of the show. There's a lot of clickbait to me from a producer's point of view, I guess. <laughs> so I, I could say. Click, click, click. <laughs> yeah, because like there's been like articles in like Japan Times and everything. Like, meet the first Tokyo-based queen on drag race. Mm-hmm. So like there's all these articles writing me as a Swedish Japanese like half. I'm like, no, I'm just a Swapanese. I'm just a Swapanese. Swedish person who just happened to be here. At the time of casting, mm. and I'm yeah. not, I'm not claiming I'm Japanese in any way. But no, you mentioned right. a really good thing. You, you are though the very first Tokyo base. Yes, mm. the first Japan base, and you're a foreigner too. Yeah, yeah. that that's too. That's huge. Uh, to be up here on Drag Race. Yeah. So yeah. was that a lot of responsibility? Um, I mean, I guess it should have been, but I guess it wasn't. I guess I uh, other other Tokyo based queens might have felt more like, oh, I need to represent the whole gang. Um, and I've always been kind of an outsider here too. So I'm like, I'm just gonna be trying to represent me, have fun with it. And uh, you know, there's a lot of really talented queens in Tokyo and in Japan too, um, that who very much deserve a spot. Um, but uh, I don't know, I was just trying to have fun. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess that you hopefully opened the world for people to think now maybe we should do a version of Japan, Drag Race mm-hmm. Japan. Well, there something. has been talks of that. Um, I've, I've seen some rumors online. I think some like Asian production company like bought the rights for a Drag Race. I think like Japan, Singapore, Korea, and one more. So oh. it might be happening. Maybe. Mm, hopefully. Maybe. Drag Maybe. Race Singapore would be interesting. That would yeah. be really cool. Ooh, it's a conservative city. I yeah, heard right? that oh. finally Germany is happening. So Germany is happening, happening right now, now right? It's, it's airing yeah. right because now. Because like, yeah. like before that, they had like rights issues and it like yeah. they started and stopped. They, all, they auditioned. Yeah, chaos, and they like they but... turned it into some other competition that aired one year. It's Yeah. yeah. So uh. I'm glad finally Germany is doing the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Santana Sex Machine, who was on My Season Drag in Sweden. Uh, Berlin based, who was like in so like we were nine contestants right in Drag Sweden. So but only six of them lived in Sweden. And then I flew in from Japan, Santana flew in from Berlin, and Antonina flew in from the UK. Oh, wow. So we had a little bit of like the Berlin scene planted already. So yeah, yeah it was kinda cool. Sweet. Okay. So well, yeah. Drag Race Sweden <laughs> happened and after that you came back to Japan. Did your life change? Um uh, Hang on, first of all, did you win Drag Race Sweden? Uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. She's, oh, the crown. Yeah. She's the crown. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. God bless. Good. And they were... Have you not seen the news? <laughs> what do you tell people what happened on the show? Do you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm getting at. Tell people I don't know, you can go watch the show. <laughs> no, no, I, I, did, I did not win. Men- now it sounds like I was being a jackass. <laughs> now it sounds like I was trying to get you to say... Oh, how did you win? win? Did you win? Did you win? No, you were second out. Oh, I just wanted you to talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank I you, was beard. on Drag Race, and then that was the end of the story. So before we get to what happened after I'm Drag Race... I'm trying to highlight the project I'm good at. That up. I'm not here to... Hi, I lost Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Why do you do me like this, Beard? Oh my god. I make music for you. Yeah. And you bring me in here to All humiliate right. me listen, in front of Ali? Listen, look, <laughs> listen. Lady Beard apologizes for any offense caused to Endigo or the nation of Sweden. Thank you. But, Thank you. Uh, for not. I will ask my ninjas to retreat. <laughs> well, Lady Beard. Sorry about Lady that. Beard. As you were saying. Lady Beard. 
You might have missed it, but there was a chance to actually watch it live in Tokyo. I was sick. Oh, yeah, I, was, I wanted to come to the party. I was yeah, yeah, there were Tokyo okay. live viewings for every episode yes. in like the rainbow area yeah. in Shinjuku, which is called Michome, yeah. and in two different clubs. Yes, we were doing that, live yeah, viewings that, of Dragway Sweden with mm-hmm. English subtitles. Yeah, that was really fun. So many people came out. A lot yeah. of Swedish people. I was there every time. You were. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Shout out to Kathy for uh, for was, showing up to the party. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And Indigo was always moderating it. <laughs> It's the shade now. I was sneezing and throwing up at the time, so for sure that would have been great company. For several for weeks. <laughs> so yeah, every time an episode came out, every week there was a screening. Yes. And uh, Indigo moderated it perfectly, sometimes with other drag queens. Yeah. And yeah, so that was that's cool. how we got to join the event and feel very emotionally involved. Yeah, in it. it was yeah. it was really exciting. For a hot second, it really felt like there was like this drag race Sweden kind of community in Tokyo mm-hmm. coming yeah. like week after week you would see the same people come back you would see new people join and then be back next week like it was it was it was really fun it was a fun time and then uh, we had personal video messages from some of the other eliminated queens showing every week uh so it was a cool little way to just celebrate everything and then you know uh finale watch party when Admira got crowned so many people so many in people Tokyo came. were rooting for Admira yeah. so like the bar was packed and it was like Admira you win and the whole like bar just erupted like oh, so. hang on please explain Myra is the queen who won Admira, Admira yes. the whole show yes but you should probably watch the entire show because it was super entertaining Man. yes yeah. and Indigo gets like some other mm-hmm. appearances surprise appearances as well so yeah. definitely go check it yes. out yes he's the Andy goat Andy goat Andy goat Andy goat, Andy goat. Andy goat. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I the say, greatest of all time absolutely. for those who don't know I say episode, e- episode 2 is the episode I have on screen time so watch that one <laughs> episode 2 <laughs> episode was 2 was also the episode my runway look that uh, Ali designed Ooh. oh wow so yeah it's a good job on that one thank the you. latex devil kind yeah. of thing oh wow thank you so much yeah I'm good job on that one Maybe how was that process uh, you know it's interesting because like we were already working together for um, what was it, like four or five months at that point, just yeah, like we were, editing photos and content. You used to be the demo vocalist for Baby Beer. I was your demo vocalist, you by the Thank way. You very much. I'm like the little you ghost character here. I'm like, I've been here all along. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so that that design process specifically was really interesting because, like, at that point, we'd already been dating for like almost a year, mm. and um, I had gotten to know so much about you and about like your journey and like I already admired you so much just from like your work ethic but then I got to know you way more personally and so I wanted to incorporate like all of the elements that you had like being Mm. feminine and like being you know like a rock star and all of that and trying to combine it together in like one look that kind of encapsulates you but also fit the theme which was like what was it long stocking extravaganza yeah. yeah so I'd be like how do I do this and I just the one thing I thought of with the devil horns like this gotta be a butt it's right, like little right. garden or something. Like it looks like a butt. I just want yeah. to say it, throw it out there. But um, it just was nice to like give that opportunity to like really give you that edge, mm. like Tokyo Harajuku fashion, on top of like yeah, yeah. Cake. It was a, yeah. It was definitely a cool combination, and it made for something that was like very unique to that season. I think. I think uh, so too. amongst all the looks from all the queens. Yeah, yeah. yeah good that job. look was often also seen in the previews. Yeah, it, it was. was all the trailers had like that one. Yeah. yeah. So I was like. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> yeah, good job. Good job. Thank you. Drag Race Sweden happened. The live screening happened. Over yes. A couple of weeks. How did your life change then? Because you're not staying in Japan, so I assume there's something that happened after that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll give you the short yet very yeah, honest version. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I got really depressed after the show. Depressed? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Most of this year, um, up until I went to. So I. I Sorry in, about that. I, it's, I forgive you. Um, <laughs> thank you. So until late July, when I went back to Sweden for Stockholm yeah. Pride, uh, it was a really tough period, honestly, because I felt like um, I, being based in Japan rather than in Sweden, I saw the other queens like reap such benefits from the show, and like they were doing all these like deals and being all these shows after all these partnerships. Uh, and I got um, nothing of that in Tokyo uh, mm-hmm. at all. I got offered a couple of like drag shows local with like my my friends um, who run drag houses in Tokyo. I did that. That was fun, but it wasn't life changing in any way whatsoever. Um, it was still fun, and like you know, it's not all about fame and career. But then for Stockholm Pride at the beginning of August, we all the cast members from the show were supposed to go perform at Stockholm Pride. And I almost didn't want to do it at first. I almost said no. Because I felt like the way I had been portrayed on the show and the fallout of that and everything, I was mostly seen as a joke. And I was like kind of bad. I was a bad drag queen. I was a bad musician. And how they like 
made me look in my head it was like that yeah. and i was like why would i go there just to publicly humiliate myself on this massive stage just for people who don't want to see me anyway because they just want to see the other contestants yeah. so i almost said no but mm -hmm. i said yes and i went there and i performed live and i mean you were in the audience yeah for the show bruh uh, so if you haven't seen it was this outdoor festival it was like 20,000 people in the audience and the, like the sea of people who all like sang along to my songs. They all knew the lyrics yep. to my songs. Yep. Um, Fuzzy Wuzzy, especially. <laughs> uh, I love Fuzzy oh, Wuzzy. Like, all, the, all this sea of people just, just knew the song. Uh, and that was not only like humbling, but like that whole trip, we were in Sweden. We were supposed to be I'm there for like, like six we days. We were just going to be there for six days. And then we were going to keep moving around Europe for like two weeks. Yeah. We ended, we ended up staying in Sweden the entire of three weeks. Yes. Because after the show, yeah. we took another two weeks just in yeah. Stockholm. Because we didn't realize we were like mainstream rock stars there. Yeah. Uh, we're like a mainstream couple. It was like, it's, it was it's so really hard to describe. Blast. But every time we like went into a shop, like chaos would erupt. Yeah. We would, Literal chaos. We would, we would travel out to the island I was raised yeah. outside of Stockholm. Because I just wanted to show off where I was raised, Ali. Yeah. Go into the local supermarket. And three different families like storm us. Like, oh my god, you're in the world. And like, right. yeah. and like it was like we would walk down the main street of Stockholm, it, it, like gangs of people. Would be happening. Like it was like paparazzi moment wherever we went, and I was like, yeah. oh, wow. and I was like, oh, this has been here all along. And That's like, what you've been missing out. Exactly. That's literally it. We'd go to all these like celebrity parties and all these like producers and promoters. Yeah. People would just come up to us, Bring like, where have you been? Finally, yeah. here you are. Here's champagne. Welcome what? to Sweden. You wow. have a market here. Like, right. what are you doing? Yes. And, and, great. and, you know, one thing led to another. I met so many amazing people, yeah. just people who were so supportive, but also like business people who were like, yo, you're so cool. We really want to work with you. Really hard to do that when you're in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And we're like, as these two bonus weeks went along every day more we and more, we'd like, be like, oh. should we just move here? Yeah. It just makes more sense. It made sense. And after these three weeks have passed and all the stuff that happened after Pride. I'm not going to go into all the detail here, but we met a lot of cool people. Like the day before we flew back, um, I was able to meet this amazing management. Clap your hands. I signed a deal with them. So yeah. I'm officially signed to a management in Sweden. Yeah. And it would come to a point where we were like, hey, if we lived here now with everything that's going on yeah. and somebody said, do you want to move to Tokyo right now? I would be like, no, why would I do that? That's like career suicide 100%. right now. Mm. And even like just from my perspective too, like when when we were, you know, in March when or in April and March when the show was airing, like, yeah. especially after episode two, like I was working very heavily behind the scenes with like, you know, the, all the social media stuff mm. and like watching how the internet reacted mm. and just seeing like the response because, you know, Reddit, Reddit is Reddit. Like we, we're, we're all, we all live in Japan. We know how the internet is. And, like, just seeing their reaction, it, like, really was a difficult month, especially after episode two. Because, like, I could just see, like, you just kind of like, oh, my God, what's happening? But then we go to Sweden, it's totally the opposite of every fear. It's like, oh, <laughs> we were so wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Can I what ask you a question? So, oh, yeah. sorry. You want to ask for yeah. what it okay. is? What was happening on the internet? Well, I mean, I, I, not to get into too crazy details, but like there was a lot of nitpicking going on and a lot of people were like questioning, you know, different aspects of Endigo's character and like being very vocal about it. You know, like how, why can't she walk? Why doesn't she do this? Yeah. Oh, you know, she's so awkward around all these girls. But this like, sounds like the internet at the best of times. Right. Is it just a matter of this was your moment to be the object of... The criticism? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not new to online criticism at all, having been a YouTuber full-time for, like, seven years. Uh, um, yeah. I think it was just the combination for me of, like, having all the Reddit negativity, social media negativity, which is to be expected, oh, yeah. but then reaping none of the benefits. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Not it was like, the positive. It was like all the other girls and all the, all you know, people online, we all get, like, positive things, we all get negative things. Mm -hmm. I, to me, I didn't get any of the positive benefits. I just got all the hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We would so. just wait. We'd just be home working and then, like, all of a sudden, it's just, you know, you don't see that. Like, you go online, you see all the other girls doing cool stuff and then yeah. we're here and then you don't know what's going on on the other side. Yes. Until we went to Sweden. Yeah. And that would make you think, like, as a confirmation error, that maybe you're doing something wrong. Right? Exactly. exactly. Love, yeah. Because 1, you didn't see the love because you weren't in the country. Yeah, no, exactly. 100%. Exactly. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. why it was so shocking when we did go and everyone's like, oh, it's time to go, oh my God, wait, yeah. you're Ali. Oh, like, it was really Like, crazy. people, like, fans at Pride, like, knew you. That was the weirdest you know. thing. Because, like, for me, like, I hadn't been online actively, like, on my own Instagram for, like, 
a year because I was oh, wow. focusing on drag race. Ah. So like all of my energy was going into like focusing on like the art and stuff behind drag race, drag con, stuff like that. So like when people knew who I was, it felt like, oh, I'm not a washed up Instagram influencer anymore. Oh, what? I have potential. I have potential. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know? right. so totally. it's like it, it, was, and it was really cool yeah. to see because I, I could really tell you were coming alive again. Even yeah. more through that. Um, yeah. So that was like a double, like, nice bonus for me. Yeah. That's very lovely. That's mm-hmm. really beautiful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you saw that positivity and you're yeah. like, I think we're, we're going to. I think there's something yeah. here and I think this is our chance to strike while the iron is still hot. 1000%. You know? yeah. Time to stock the home. Yeah. yeah. Stock, stock the whole time. They, stock they, the home. They, you know, they said, my, it was my first time in Europe. My friends were like, don't get Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> 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 See how that went. I love that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. Yes. So so yeah. So uh, we came back. We went to Sweden. Couldn't you know? Could, couldn't wait to just be back. We're like, mm-hmm. let's not go. Let's not stay in Sweden. That's second longing that we need. Went there, did everything, and we were like, oh wow, Oops. we're moving. Yeah, this we're moving. It. We had really? no plans to move, but we went and like. It was like a week, and we were like, oh nope. Yeah. We'll call all our friends. Really? Yep. So, a, wow, that's like, but it's good that you like able to like up and move. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's very you. I, I yeah. know both of you for a long time and just yeah. coming into Japan and getting a visa. Oh, yeah. such a struggle oh, for yeah. both yeah. of you. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, you, helped, yeah. you, have, you essentially helped I was, us both. I was, yeah. <laughs> You'd be like yeah, you're our, our like, mother yes, in mother. Japan. Mother. Oh, <laughs> my now children. We're, now we're ready to leave the nest. We're leaving the nest, mother. Can we say Onesan or maybe older sister? Oh, yeah, I did not give birth to you. I'd be dead. You're so... They have this size. size. As a toddler, no, this size. I'm pretty sure like not Probably not like with Six Endigo. foot baby, like. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. Slice and Sims 3. That's a good bad name. Six foot baby. Six foot. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's the anyways. Album. Yeah. That's the album, yeah. <laughs> so, but for like, like me knowing how much both of you struggled, none yeah. of you had an easy way into Japan. No. no. So, you know, and you fought to be here, to yes. stay here, to Quite. get here and Quite. to be here. You both were fighting. Yes. Yeah. So, it's a big. So it came as for me as a big surprise that you're like, we're leaving. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Because yeah. that's the thing. Like, reg- like despite how hard we fought and how long we dreamt of coming to Japan, yeah. leaving Japan like that was the easiest decision of my life. <laughs> yeah, no, same. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you didn't feel any kind of sunk cost bias. Um, I feel like I invested a lot of myself into Japan, and yeah. I invested a lot of Japan into myself. Yeah, and. It did everything it needed to, and yeah, okay. it's about knowing when to quit. Yeah, okay. Right. okay. And for me, I'm like, it's time. How Different about, stage in life, kind of. Yes, for how, sure. How about you, Ali? You know, it's interesting because, like, my 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 experience with Japan has been, like, since I was born. Like, my family is so involved with Japan and, like, everything. And Tell them about your grandpa. <laughs> is your grandpa <laughs> Japanese? your episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, so my, my grandfather uh, helped a lot during World War II to try to establish, you know, friendly relations. So, like, oh. he, he was the founder of the first... First uh, World Fair here in Osaka. They're having 2025. Shout out World um, Expo. World Expo. Shout out. But he he established that one. He established the uh, San Francisco Osaka Sister City Partnership. Um, he's done a lot. He helped start some of the first study abroad programs in Japan. So my, my study fr- abroad program. Yeah, and from America to Japan after World wow. War Two. So it's been like a huge thing in my family, and like everyone has been to Japan, or everyone has been like involved some way, one way or another. And for me, it was like I wanted to fill that like birthright. Because oh. a lot of them were like, we need like more di- diplomats, more slow. But I wanted to do it my way, mm. which was coming here to do music and be a pop star. But you get kind of swept up in trying to maintain yeah. Japan. That yeah, you I lose, that, that yeah. you lose totally what lose got you of, here. Yeah, you yeah. lose sight of what, what mattered and, in the first place. And that's kind of what happened. So like, it's, it's just been like, you know, the decision still tough a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's this part of me that I invest, I went to college. I did everything, you know, I'm in debt. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to, you know, I, I can't imagine myself without Indigo. And I also mm, can see, nothing. like, I mean, you know, and like, I I also, you know, we're both so passionate about our, our art and our mm. careers and our jobs and our lives and everything. And like, I, I just would be, I can see myself, you know, moving away from Japan will probably be able to make it easier to come back. Yes. Cuz like living here and working here is so different from visiting. Mm-hmm. And like <laughs> and, and, and and like you know that's its own can of worms, but at the same time it's like, you know, like for example, like let's say someone wants to move to LA to see an artist mm-hmm. and the artist doesn't know who you are and this guy's living in LA for so long and then they get an opportunity to move abroad. 
And then all of a sudden moving abroad a year or two later, this artist notices them. Mm. It's like that maybe being away and being able to actually establish myself because I can now that I don't have to like focus on all this other stuff just to stay in Japan. Yeah. Maybe that'll make Japan interested in me yeah. or at least okay. they'll give me a shot again. You know, it's not off the table, but I, I don't think I can see myself living here full time again, just because it's not suitable for my personality. <laughs> you have like a great future set up in yeah, Sweden. Yeah, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Fingers and crossed. And you're going to leave Japan with a, with a heavy heart and yeah. maybe not as heavy as Ali's. Did you have some struggles? I mean, struggles well, it's still, it's still heavy. You know, I, it was one of my dreams always to, to come to Japan and live here. And again, you firsthand know the, the problems I had to face getting a visa. Because I don't have any degrees from any university. So I can't do the normal get a job, get a work visa here. Uh, so I had, to, I had to hustle, let me tell you what. No. Came in with a student visa first. Yeah. Uh, language student for one year, uh, was able to get an artist visa after that, oh, had cool. that for one year, um, which was great. I just did my own music, did my own YouTube, um, so I've been doing full-time for so many years. Did that for one year, uh, and then I was unable to renew it for dumb reasons that were not my fault. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, what options do I have now? And I'm like, well, I could just start my own music company and do that. So I started a company, got a business manager visa, had that for a year. I'm, I'm now in my year two. Just got it renewed. Uh, only got one year. I hope for three, but oh well. Um, but you're leaving anyway, so it's fine. Yes, I'm yeah. leaving anyway. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I was able to start my music company and just do my company stuff and do my music through that. But running a company in Japan, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. I have so many. I, I can't even tell. I have about 12 employees total right now. 12? Wow. From, from full-time to contractors, wow. like everything in between. Uh, and there's just so much money being lost in nothing, really. Paper like work. Japanese bureaucracy. Yep. Um, bureaucracy. And it, it just kind of sucks. Uh, there's weeks where like for weeks at a time, I'm not able to do any music, do anything at all. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any time to do any makeup, nothing. Because oh. I'm just stuck doing paperwork or like trying to talk to the different departments doesn't matter. It doesn't further my career. Like, you know, and at that point, like, I don't have any time to do any music. Mm -hmm. Thus, there's no more money for, to go into the company. Oh, God. So I'm like, wow, what? Circle. I'm like, yeah. what is this loop of just losing all the money I've ever saved just so I can stay in this apartment and keep doing it all over just so I can be miserable and not make any more music? Mm -hmm. That's sort of the loop. You were moving away more and more from your creative side as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, uh, until I did the music, like my new single, I'll get into that in a bit. Ooh. But until that, uh, the only real new music I made over the past six months before Pride was the music I did with Babybeard. Um, really? That's all yeah. the music I had time to do. Oh, hang on, but straight after Drag Race, you released um, what, Neo Geisha, didn't I? You released one of your singles oh, straight after? Yeah, Metaverse, yeah. I'm so sorry, so, Metaverse. so that, that was during the airing. So I was supposed to do a song a week oh, for each wow. episode with a music video. So I did the first one. And then we did a second one and shot it and filmed it that we never released. Yeah. Uh, I had oh, to cancel that entire thing because I was too busy doing company paperwork. Just yeah. from doing yep. paperwork. Yep. Yep. All right. And that's that been that's awful. been like all of my year, just stuck doing this paperwork while I see like all the other people from the show go out yeah. and like live their best lives, and I'm well, here like I mean I can see rotting how, away. I can see how that would be depressing. Yeah. Yeah. No. And no. that in extra contrast, coming to Sweden and getting this celebrity uh, treatment, it was it was kind of easy choice. Mm -hmm. And just purely financially too, I'll save so much money doing the same thing in Sweden mm -hmm. compared to doing it here with the company and everything. Right, really? So yeah. All right, so, so bigger yeah. opportunities. Yes. More creativity. Absolutely. And time for creativity. Absolutely, absolutely. Does that mean that the Endigo company in Japan are going to close that one? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. I will. Um, and it's moving dear, to the do you have advice for those who are considering starting a company in Japan? Um, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you need specifically? Well, I was thinking you might say either one, don't do it. <laughs> or two, if you do do it, do it like this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again, knowing what I know oh, now. Okay. Now, I was very thankful. Shout out to my friend Michael, who speaks excellent Japanese. Hey, it's a lot of meetings with different bureaus. You have to go and do like super formal paper filing and talking in Japanese. A lot of lawyers involved. Oh, that sounds awful. And that whole process I could not have done without a, a good Japanese speaking friend who took time out of his day to do it. Um, so like be very confident in your Japanese, I guess. Number two, know that you have enough time and know that you have enough money because mm -hmm. it's gonna take a lot of time and money. 
Um, really? So like just to have the company? Yes. Well, there's a lot of maintenance, a lot of pension filing, a lot of staff stuff like that. Pension. If you if you try to start a company um, to get a visa and stay here doing your own whatever you're doing, mm. um, know that you will need to invest five million yen into a company. What's that? Oh. It's like what fifty thousand US? Fifty thousand. Yeah, US. give or take currency mm-hmm. exchange rate. Uh, you don't need to hire anybody for the first year, but okay. if you want to get your company renewed for the second year. You need to hire one full time person oh. uh, and pay them a full time salary oh. uh, out of your own pocket. Oh. <laughs> and but you had twelve people on your staff. I have oh. I have one full timer, which is Ali, oh, uh, and then I have like full timer. I have like twelve contractors who work between. This is boring. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, because no, I think this. I have a lot of people, people who work to hear. Is, because you usually yeah. don't hear. No one tells okay. you. Okay, this is one this of is, the this options. This is a to come route. This is a route. Is yeah. Terrible. I think this is extreme hard mode, though. <laughs> yeah. So again, this is like one of my only options as somebody who doesn't have a degree. So if you just want to live in Japan for the sake of it, and you don't have a bachelor degree of any kind, uh, this is the route you might have to take. Uh, this is the, route, the only route I could take, really, unless you marry a Japanese person and just do that. I guess that works too. Um, That's yeah. actually a thing that I keep mentioning on Ask Japanese and stuff as well. Is like in Japan because the average person goes to university. Yeah. The standard for working in Japan is like you just have to have a degree. What makes you better mm-hmm. than exactly. a Japanese person who just went the normal path and yeah. went straight to university? Exactly. Even though in Europe we have other options, right? Yeah. We have apprenticeships yes. and stuff like that. And yeah, one thousand percent. And at that point, it's like, what's your value as a foreigner that a Japanese person got in for the same job don't provide? So does, you need to have something extra. Does the standard issue Japanese? Ad- have a degree generally the majority does yeah yeah it's really? the other, like with the everyone just goes to either university or the semon gakko the kind of like specialized university. yeah really uh, mm. so, so, so the fellow kind of down the kombini has been to university might even be stopping Probably. right now oh, maybe he's still okay. going oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think a lot of like kombini staff might be like just doing that while they're in uni to get that's the cash. convenience mm. store for those yeah. who aren't yeah. familiar yeah, I see. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Wow. Off mm-hmm. to bigger and better yes. adventures yes. from both of you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So this is Andigo's part of the story, but Ali's part of the story is going to be in the next mm-hmm. episode. So there's more tea to spill. Mm-hmm. So, Anything you would like to promote, though? Uh, well, my new single is probably out by the time this episode goes oh. out. Uh, I haven't even mentioned that, but new single, Living as a Ghost. Uh, dropped on all platforms October 20 it's a full metal song it's like a little metal core with a little power metal mix uh, it's uh, quite fun so you go listen to it you want to bust out some acapella for us right now? no oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I might at the end of Alice episode you have to check Ooh. that out okay. oh, alright anything else so, yeah. promote your social medias? Um, no go listen to Living as a Ghost <laughs> <laughs> it's good Ali what's your social media? Uh, k- k- iconic Ali <laughs> oh, I like dot alley. oh, dot alley. Sorry, Hang dot on. alley. Just, just quickly, what is your social media? <laughs> uh, at Indigo Pink, oh, uh, which is yeah. my my social media. Fun fact: Drag Race, the first episode's first runway, when they call out all the people who are gonna walk, they call me out first as Indigo Pink, and I'd like cut, stop the recording. That's Did not my really? name. Ah. <laughs> like, oh, sorry. Let's do it again. Indigo. <laughs> thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming yeah. on. Yeah, thanks for having us. We'll see you again shortly. Yes. Yeah. And another part episode of Goodbye. Should we try this together? Yeah. On another okay. episode yeah. of Cat with Beard. Can we say goodbye in Swedish? Hey, Hey, Hey,